Now, if you are thinking of removing your own skin tag, don't. We all have skin tags and they come in many different shapes and sizes. So let's talk about them. In medical terms, skin tags are also known as acrocordons or fibroepithelial polyps and they usually appear as flesh-coloured lesions on a narrow stalk. They are soft and smooth and wobbly in nature and they can occasionally become painful and red when they are snagged and traumatised. And if they become twisted, which can sometimes happen, they can sometimes become black in colour. There are many causes for skin tags and the main reason why people get skin tags is because of friction and this is why you often get skin tags appearing in the skin folds on your neck, under your arms, your eyelids, belly and groins. Pregnant women in their second or third trimester of their pregnancy are also more likely to develop skin tags and this is thought to be due to hormonal fluctuations and weight gain. Your own genetic makeup can also make you more prone to getting them, especially if you have family members who have a lot of skin tags. People with certain genetic conditions are also more likely to get them, such as in burkhock dube syndrome which is a very rare condition where you get an increased risk of skin tags, collapsed lung, kidney cancer and lung cysts. But don't worry, it's very very rare. Skin tags can also be caused by high insulin levels and this can be seen in people who are overweight or people with diabetes. It's often a sign of metabolic syndrome which is a name for a group of health issues that is linked to insulin resistance and this actually puts you at risk of having type 2 diabetes, fatty liver disease and heart conditions like raised cholesterol levels and heart attacks. Interestingly, studies have also shown that perianal skin tags, which are basically skin tags around the back passage, are more commonly seen in people with Crohn's disease. For those who are not aware, Crohn's disease is a type of inflammatory bowel disease where people often experience bloody diarrhea and stomach cramps due to inflammation in the lining of the gut. It can present in other ways and skin tags is one of the skin presentations. So let me put it out there, skin tags are completely harmless and they don't require treatment. In fact, because skin tag removals are considered a cosmetic procedure, we don't even see them in our clinics in our healthcare system in the UK. Occasionally, we do remove them in very strict conditions, such as if they are causing a lot of discomfort and pain or if they are bleeding, being traumatised or caught by clothing for example. But this is very rarely done because we simply do not have the capacity to see and treat or skin tags, especially with huge number of skin cancer referrals we see in our clinics on a daily basis. The other time we think about removing a skin tag is when it's not looking like a skin tag. In fact, I would be quite cautious when it comes to removing your own skin tags at home without having had them looked at by your own doctor in the first instance. Now, there are quite a few lesions that appear like skin tags but they are not skin tags. And here are some examples of them. It can be a neurofibroma which is a type of nerve tumour and it can present similar to a skin tag in a sense that it's often flesh coloured and soft. On its own, it's a non-wearing benign lesion but if you have multiple neurofibromas, this might be a sign of a genetic condition called neurofibromatosis. And neurofibromatosis can be dangerous and so we need extra monitoring with scans and so and so forth. Moles can sometimes look like skin tags, especially the fleshier ones, and moles come in various shapes and sizes, and so it's a no-brainer that some of them can actually look flesh-coloured and soft like a skin tag. If you try to remove them, it might cause more problems like bleeding and not being able to remove it completely. Another skin tag wannabe is dermatofibromas, and this is also a non-wearing lesion caused by an overgrowth of fibrous tissue in the deeper part of the skin. We think it's because of a reaction to something like an insect bite or a skin prick but actually a lot of the patients tell me that they don't remember having had any previous injury. Because of the way it is, dermatofibromas are much firmer than skin tags and they sort of dimple in the middle when you pinch the skin. I think warts look different from skin tags but again they come in various forms and so it can be quite difficult to be 100% sure of what they are. Filiform warts are made up of long thin projections of the skin and they can look quite similar to skin tags but in this case they feel much harder 
and they often have this warty sort of appearance to them. The main thing we need to avoid is to mistake skin cancers for skin tags. And so they can be either a squamous cell carcinoma, basal cell carcinoma, or even a non-pigmented melanoma, which sometimes can look flesh colored with no pigmentation. If you try to remove yourself, the risk is that you might disrupt the top layer of the skin, and this makes diagnosing them much more difficult. So the moral of the story is, make sure that your skin tags are definitely skin tags before you try to remove them. And in terms of skin tag removals, there are so many different ways people do at home to remove them. And so let's have a look at them. Some people use a rubber band or dental floss to tie off a skin tag. Some people swear by other things such as using apple cider vinegar, tea tree oil, and even salicylic acid. I would however not advise you to do any of that because of the reasons as we've discussed. And also you might make things worse by not completely removing them, causing more bleeding, scarring, and risk of infections. The main thing you can do to prevent more skin tags from appearing is to reduce as much friction as possible. So for example, if you are prone to metabolic syndrome, losing weight and eating healthily can improve your glucose levels. And not only does it help with reducing the number of skin tags, but it also helps your general health. And so it's a win-win situation. In dermatology, we can use various tools in our toolbox to help treat skin tags. So for example, we can use liquid nitrogen, also known as cryotherapy, to freeze skin tags off. The cold temperature actually kills the cells within the skin tag, blocking its blood supply and causing it to fall off naturally. We can use it by spraying it directly on the skin tag or by dipping forceps into the cryotherapy and pressing the cold forceps on the stock. We can also remove skin tags by shaving them under local anesthetic, either with with a sterile blade or scissors. There are other ways of removing, such as cauterization or electro dissection. And this is where we burn the skin tags off using an electrical device called a hyphricator. And you'll be left with a scab which will heal in about one to three weeks. So the reason why I'm making this video is to highlight the fact that actually skin tags are not always skin tags. It's always, always good to have them checked by a healthcare professional who knows what they are talking about. And then if it's skin tag, then you can go through the various treatment options that I've just listed. The ones that you use at home may not necessarily work. In fact, it can cause more problems than good. So I would recommend checking out any reputable clinics which offer skin tag removals in a professional setting rather than actually doing it yourself. I hope you find this video useful. If so, please give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel as this would mean a lot to me. If you have any suggestions on future video ideas, please leave a comment in the comment box below and see you later. Bye bye.